Hey friends, we're learning C sharp. We just learned about while loops and do loops and loops in general, but the one that is the the bane of the existence of most people when they learn to code is the for loop. I the know when I learned loop. it in you the, it's the best it's loop. The best loop. When I learned it in C, it was a little bit scary because it's the one that's got the most going on. Okay? Now we look at our code right here and we've got a counter that starts at a certain number, whether it be 10 or 0 or 1, and we were doing a little spin do this thing uh, while the counter is less than five. And we output zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's do that again, but let's do it as a for loop. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take that code and tell me if this is an okay thing to do, David. I'm gonna put a comment around it. This is called commenting out your code. We saw the two forward slashes to have a single line. Here I'm gonna put a slash and an asterisk, star, and an yep. asterisk, and a slash, or a star and a slash. And the code is now turned green. It's invisible, isn't it, to the compiler? Green means invisible to the compiler. Okay. Yep. So that cannot be seen. So I'm going to just say, hold this for later. So we're going to compare our for loop. Now, I've said for loops are a little scary because I think there's a lot going on. Okay. They're a little intimidating, but you're a fan. It's pretty easy to me. I'm yeah. kidding. Okay, let's do it's great. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's do, do for loops. So I'm going to type four. Now, this is something interesting. We have that drop down, that IntelliSense. And I see four written in here twice. That's right. One is this, the actual keyword, the four <laughs> keyword. And one is this thing called a snippet. Okay. So if I say four and I pick that snippet and I hit enter, it just expanded. Stuff. It just did it again. Let me, let me do that again. It helped you. It helped me. I want to just make a little space. I want to see that happen again. And I've zoomed in really big in here because I want to make sure people see it. F, O, R. And there's two kinds of icons, right? The one with the dots at the bottom, mm -hmm. that is the snippet. It says for loop on the right side. Right. If I pick this one, I just type four and I keep typing. Right. But if I type four and I pick this one that actually says for loop and I hit enter, it expands. Now for loops, I'm going to make a little white space here and you tell me if this is okay just to understand has three components because you and I have been very specific and consistent about the idea that a line ends in a semicolon. semicolon. Oddly enough, though, that one does not. Because it has the, the, I see, <laughs> the parentheses it, to make it feel warm. I see. That parentheses. Oh, this is the little hug. Yep. That's the hug. Here and there. Two friends. Okay. So what are the three steps for a for loop? First, you want to initialize your state. Okay. Any variables, so it's funny, I is the most commonly used variable name for a for loop in all the programming history. I, would I say is. I. Not X, not, not Y. Not X, not Just, Y. Okay. The same way we use X and Y for algebra in math, mm -hmm. I is kind of the canonical name of a variable for the for loop. Is it because of I is for index? In, initialize index, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, 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 that's right. Okay, so you're saying int I, it can be int anything, doesn't matter, but yep. we're going to use I. And we start at zero. That is the most common place to start these loops at okay. zero you for different reasons. Don't have to. Don't have to, but it's common. Okay. So you'll see examples on the internet in every language with these kinds of loops. Okay. And then we have our conditional. That's the same conditional From that we might if, use for if or while. Or while. Or yep. You got it. Okay. Now it's saying length does not exist because the snippet just expanded. Right. But it doesn't tell me what length is. And we were using five. Five. Before. Yep. Okay. So declare i equals zero, mm -hmm. and then every iteration, every every loop cycle, or what we call an, an iteration, okay. um, evaluate the conditional. So i less than five. So this is our iteration, which is going to doing an increment or a making bigger. Yeah. So the last, actually no, yes, that's right. That last piece, the 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 last thing, is probably the most confusing part of the loop because that that isn't in any other loop normally you would increment the counter in the body of the loop. So you would do while, mm -hmm. condition, counter plus plus. Now we're doing it as part of the loop itself. So fours let you have this overall structure for counting stuff up. Yep. So you're seeing this pattern of declare and start from your um, first state, and then every iteration run this conditional, mm -hmm. and then at the end of each iteration, increment the variable. That's right. the, the current pattern. Not for scary loops. at all. Not scary at all. It's very, <laughs> <laughs> very obvious structure. No, no, not really. No, no. So There's more parts. We've got four. We start with our, our little hug there. We have setup, 
the conditional that we are going to evaluate. Yep. And then we have the do something to move us forward that changes it so that this conditional has a reason to look again. Right. Right. And then we have this scope here. And I just put do the thing inside of there. We could say console dot right line i. Why is, oops, there we go, semicolon. Why is i available to me? We had talked about how this is a, a block or a scope. Right. I didn't say up here, I'll make a little space, int i equals zero. Right. I have it down here. Now there's two i's. And it says you can't have two i's. Right? It says, hey, you can't declare one. You're already using it. So that's good information. So how long does this i live for? Yeah, so the, the for loops have a structure that let you declare variables for the, for the scope of the for loop. So in this case, you declare the i in line, again, in line that keyword, in the actual for loop. Mm -hmm. You could declare it out of the for loop, and you could make it zero within the for loop as well. That also works. Um, but the loop structure is set up such that it is kind of uh, designed for counting, designed for counting up or down, right? Okay. So I'm going to put that back on one line. We joke about one line uh, before in our other videos, but that is the correct way to do a, a for loop. You are expected to have the for loop look like that. And you read that as 4i from 0, yep. while i is less, less than, than 5. five. Yep. i plus plus. i plus plus. Increment. increment i. Yeah. That's right. OK, cool. So let's see if that works. And that should hopefully get us what we want, which was 0 through 4. Very cool. So we had, in, in I, I think, much more succinct syntax. Mm -hmm. um, the, the for loop is optimized for counting, counting up, counting down. If you look at the other loops, they're much more general purpose, right? That's a good you point. You don't really have to declare the, the, the counter or the increment somewhere else. You just put it in the loop itself. OK. The for loop has more structure. Well, here we've got a do while, or it could be a while. Here we've got a for. You're saying people are more likely to pick this one, but they, they literally do the exact same thing. Yeah, exactly. You can express the exact same type of loop in a for, a while, or a do while. Okay. It's just kind of preference and what, what each one is kind of um, designed for. Mm -hmm. And with the do while, it did this section here no matter what. Exactly. It happens first. But with the for loop, this is always evaluated. Correct. So there's no such thing as a do for. Do for? No. <laughs> it's not a thing. Actually, some languages only have one construct. So that, that just shows you you can use either construct to kind of design your loop. Well, speaking of adding constructs, let's try this. I'm going to go ahead and remove our while here. And let's combine what we learned in the previous video. And let's put an if ah, cool. around this. So we'll say if i equals 3. And then I'm going to do what you said and put my brackets around it, because you said it's better to be explicit, otherwise Good. it can be confusing. So now I've got 4i from 0 to 5, 0 through 4. If i is 3 in the middle of this loop, I'll output 3. So I'm expecting only 3 gets output. Good. Fair? You should format the document. Make it, make it look Should clean. I format the document again? You should. Shift, Control, P, or Shift, Alt, F, format document. Ooh, nice. Looks crisp. All right. Again, I can hit Control, F5 inside of the dev kit, or I can just go and say .NET run. It's totally up to me. You get a little bit more information, a little bit more background information here. And there you go. Three. Perfect. The answer there is three. So here we have combined a for loop and an if. We could also have multiple for loops, multiple nested for loops, and that can be pretty excited as well. Uh, a nested for loop might look like this, where we say, Columns and rows. Yep. It's very common to do things like, um, you know, games when you like learn to code. You Print might... tables and boards. Yep. Yep. Print a chessboard for each row, for each column. And then if we combine string interpolation from before, look at this. Those variables, row and column, are available in that curly brace scope, allowing us to go and Print that out. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty cool. I'm going to hit copy directly from Microsoft Learn. I go back over here. I'm going to hit Control A for all, Control V to paste. 
And then let's go and see what that prints out. See? So it's moving around some chessboard, and we could change that to maybe do X's and O's yep. or tic-tac-toe or whatever. So that nested for loop is the beginning of that. So understanding that right there, I think, is a, a good place to stop. Yeah. All right. We are learning all about fours, and we're going to go and do collections. And then we're going to learn about four each, which is going to be a dark horse that's going to come out of nowhere. <laughs> like, what's a that? new loop construct? Another one. It's going to be amazing. We're learning all about C-sharp. Awesome.